Hi, I'm Wendy and welcome to the first installment of Midwest Muscle, the car show where you'll get to see some gorgeous cars on and off the road and also get the inside scoop on them from the people who own them. We're coming to you from the Volo Car Museum in Volo, Illinois, our home base. Today we have a great show for you planned. We're going to Harrisburg, Illinois to meet with one of the most patriotic car owners in the country. Then we'll get a great tip from our resident tech tip girl, Caroline. We're going to the Chevy Vet Fest in Chicago, and we'll check back into the Volo Museum with Loetta, who'll show us some great cars, including the Boot Hill Express and the original Batmobile. So, don't go away, we'll be right back. All-American dream car, what do you think of? Perhaps maybe a certain model or a certain year that it was made? How many of us think of the All-American dream car as a way to make a patriotic statement? To Bonnie Mitchell of Harrisburg, Illinois, her 2000 Corvette was a way to do just that. Bonnie, thank you so much for being with us. I'm glad you all are here. Thank you. You're welcome. So, from what I understand, you had a 2000 white Corvette. Yes, I did. It was, it was just plain just plain white, uh, right out of the factory, uh, nothing custom about it. And then what made you decide to uh, custom job it? Well, uh, we were in New York City two days after the World Trade Centers were hit, and it made quite an impact on me. And I knew when I came home that I wanted to do something to show my patriotism. I wasn't, at the moment, I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And you couldn't buy flags, you couldn't really buy anything red, white, and blue, and I always kind of wanted to do something with the Corvette, and that's when the idea hit me to paint flags on the Corvette. So, and then the next thing was coming up with a design, which it took me a few days, and I laid in bed and laid awake at night, <laughs> and then the design came. So, what exactly uh, did you do? I know that it's a it's an airbrushed paint job. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I had a graphic artist here in Southern Illinois do the painting for me after I came up with the design and and he and I worked together and he taped while I would show him where I wanted the design and we laid it out that way. Definitely hands-on. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely hands-on, yes, and uh, he said there was probably 27 miles of tape on that car when he got all the, wow. all the stripes and everything, wow. uh, you know, uh, taped off and then he started painting it and then it's got several coats of clear coat over that so it's it's definitely permanent I've had a lot of people ask oh is that a decal no it's not a decal that's a permanent paint job and so as long as the car is here the paint will be on it so you use this as your everyday car this is my everyday car and people Tooling around town traveling yes. I know you have family in St. Louis yes you I do my trips. kids uh-huh my kids are both in St. Louis so I make quite a few trips there but it goes to the grocery store, it goes to Walmart, it goes to all the normal places that, you know. So people here in town are pretty used to seeing the red, white, and blue car in, right. in Harrisburg. I yes. imagine it's uh, sort of become, you've become a bit of a celebrity. Well, I don't know about that, but the people <laughs> like the car. Right. Uh, they smile, they wave. If I'm going down the highway and people see it for the first time, I get thumbs up. Uh, I've had people like hang out of their car windows, you know, <laughs> trying to wave at me or, or see the car better. And uh, we play the little circle the car game on the interstate. I know you all have seen the commercial, I mean, that they have uh, where they keep circling one car well they do that to me on the interstate they pull oh. up beside me go you know and then slow up and then go on up and then they'll slow up so I have to pass them keep and checking you yeah, out yeah right so that they get the full 360 degrees and then usually then they will speed up past me and give me a thumbs up you know so I understand you've had quite a bit of recognition at car shows uh, yes I had the car at the Chevy Vet Fest in Chicago in November and I was really honored to win the uh, gold in the bow tie division. It was my first car show, so I was thrilled. Oh, wonderful. How can we How can we see pictures of this? Uh, well, I have a little website set up with some pictures on it because it, it is way too time consuming to try to email them. So right. uh, you can go to my website okay. and check out the pictures there. Wonderful. Um, what's, your, what's your next step? Where do you want to take the car? 
Well, my ultimate goal would be to drive the car one lap, one patriotic lap around the Indianapolis track at the Indy wow. 500 with, uh, I call it my theme song, the God Bless the USA. Uh, that's my theme song for my car. And I would love to have that playing in the background. I think everyone in the audience would be standing, singing along with me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Um, what do you think about taking me for a ride? Oh, I'd love to take you for a ride, Wendy. Great. Okay, let's go. So when I think of uh, Corvettes, I think of speed. How fast do you normally go? Well, I try to stay somewhat within <laughs> the speed limit, but I have had it up to about 115. And that's my max yeah. so far. Out here on these country roads, I bet it's real easy to go fast. <laughs> it is if you get a real quiet road on a quiet day. I'm sure the, the police don't want to stop a car with an American flag on. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> Jackie Gleason had his 1968 Lincoln Continental. Muhammad Ali had his gold Rolls Royce. And Nancy Sinatra didn't need her boots for walking because she had her Ferrari. We are going to show you some amazing restored muscle cars from the Volo Museum. Never heard of the Volo Museum? Well, you'll be hearing a lot more because it'll be our home base. It's located in Volo, Illinois, just 45 miles northwest of Chicago, or in cyberspace, that's www.volocars.com. Look at this place, it's mind-blowing. There's over 300 cars here, some of which you're probably gonna recognize from television shows or movies, like the original Batman car, or the Dukes of Hazzard, or Knight Rider, and We've got some pretty glamorous cars because some special people on them, like famous people, movie stars, MVPs like Michael Jordan or singers. During this episode, though, we're going to show you some sleek and powerful cars. This is Midwest Muscle, the only car show coming to you from the Midwest. Come back after the break, and we'll be talking to Greg Graham and his son Brian about cars, their motors, and the stories behind them. Hi, I'm Wendy with Midwest Muscle, and I just got to drive this 442 Oldsmobile Cutlass, 1972. Um, 350 rocket engine, is that? That's what's in this car. Okay, what yeah. else is an option? They had a 455 rocket available, too. Okay, is this the original engine in this car? Yes, this is original. Um, this is Jay from the Volo Car Museum, one of three owners. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the history of this car? Do you know? where you got it, where it came from? Actually, we owned this car about 10 years ago. Okay. This is the second time we're selling it again. It has 65,000 miles on this one. Which is nothing. No. It's <laughs> wow. a very, very nice original piece. You should keep it. Yeah, I'd like or to. Or I'll keep thought it. thought about it. If you like. Um, so, in terms of the 442, can you explain that to me? What What's the significance to that? 442 concept meant it was a four-speed, four-barrel dual exhaust. Okay. They did not stick to that. They did build automatics. Uh, a lot of people argue over what 442 actually stands for. So I would imagine purists don't mm -hmm. feel that the uh, automatic transmission would really s be a true Right, and actually they built more automatics than four speeds. The four speeds are quite rare. Oh, well, <laughs> a little bit easier to drive. How fast have you made it go? <laughs> when I was 16, I was burning up the tires on these cars, but I think I got it out of my system. <laughs> Did I, your I, dad know that? <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. He does now, though, after there you he go. sees this. Um, but no, this, this car is fast standing still. This has the, the wing on it and stripes and big massive ram air scoops. Uh, this, this is probably the most exotic muscle car. Now, um, leather interior? No, is vinyl. Vinyl? vinyl yeah. Okay. Um, it looks perfect inside. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Can I drive it again? Sure. Okay.
Hi, and welcome back. I'm Luetta, and I am now talking with Greg Grams, the owner of the Volo Museum in Volo, Illinois. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> you want to tell me a little bit about the start of the business? and Well, the museum here, a lot of people know, but uh, we're one of the oldest and the largest in the entire North America. Uh, actually, my dad uh, started the business back in 1960 is when we purchased the farm. Oh, wow. At that time, uh, I bought my first Model T, bought for $35, and my brother, he's a little older, he was in college, and he purchased a Packard for $50, and that was kind of the start of it. We used to buy and sell and collect old junk cars, unrestored, such as old Packards, old Chryslers, you know, this is all back from the 30s. This is before muscle cars were even thought of yet. But uh, over the years, we started collecting the cars, and uh, by the 70s, these cars got quite valuable. And uh, what really started us and motivated us in the buying and the selling of the cars, uh, back in 1970, I had a Chrysler CD Roadster in 1931. We purchased it for $300, the most we ever spent on a car, and we were offered 25000 for it. Wow. That was kind of the start of it. That's when we started remodeling and people said that we should be open as a museum to the public. Wow, so why don't we take a walk through here and you can tell me, because I noticed that there are not only cars that are for sale, but I also noticed that you have some pretty special cars, like the Batman car behind yeah, us. Yeah, what museums, uh, what keeps us different than other museums, most museums, their cars are stagnant in them. If you go there once, you come back a year from now, most of the cars will be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, our cars, we keep them very active. They change on a daily basis because we do sell cars. But besides all the cars changing throughout the museum, we have quite a few Hollywood and celebrity cars. Those are my personal collection that uh, we keep throughout the museum for mm -hmm. the people, uh, for a form of entertainment. They enjoy seeing the cars. I do believe we're the only uh, museum in the USA right now that has such a large display of uh, celebrity and Hollywood cars. And Which are, for instance, I, besides well, the Batman car, the, what is it? we have the Batmobile from the TV series uh, with Adam West. Mm. That was back in 1966. Uh, we have the car from Knight Rider. Matter of fact, we actually have the actual stunt car that they used. Oh, wow. Um, the original Dukes of Hazard, from General Lee Enterprise. Uh, we just acquired the, um, the time machine, the DeLorean time machine, as seen in the movie Back to the Future. I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a lot of celebrities. Uh, Natalie Wood, she was always kind of my favorite, and I finally got her car. Uh, it was a 63 Riviera. She bought it uh, the same month she divorced Robert Wagner, which was kind of uh, nice. Um, we have <laughs> some other strange cars here. We have Marilyn Monroe's car. Oh, that wow. Was in the parade. Uh, uh, if you're from Chicago or you might remember or heard of Helen Brock, the, the candy heiress, mm -hmm. Brock Candy, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, two of her cars. We have her personal car and her chauffeur-driven car. Of course, she was, no, her body was never found. So we have the cars here on display and a lot of people come out to see those. But uh, again, besides all the, uh, when you come out here, you'll never know what you're gonna find around the corner. There's always another Hollywood car, or celebrity car sitting there. And uh, all the cars here, what's really nice when you come in, they all have price tags right on them. Mm -hmm. We average about 80 cars a month. So we sell probably more than most dealers do put together in a month. Of all our cars here, <clears throat> because we have five buildings and we have several categories of cars, we have the antique car division, which would be the cars from 1900 to 1948. Mm -hmm. And then we have our 50s cars, our 60s, and then we have muscle. I'd have to say the muscle cars are definitely the strongest of all the cars. Um, probably 65 to 70 percent of our sales are muscle cars. That's the hottest car in the market because that's the generation. The guy, 
he couldn't afford that muscle car back when uh, he was going to school and now he's grown up. Kids are grown up, they're married, and now he can afford to buy that car that he used to dream about or he used to just drool over at high school, and now he can afford to buy it. There's only one problem, there's not enough muscle cars out there. Our population is constantly growing, but they only made so many muscle cars, so it's getting very hard to find them now. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was okay. a pleasure meeting well, you. Well, thank you very, very much. And we'll be back after this message. Hi, I'm Caroline, and welcome back to Midwest Muscle. This is our tech tip segment where every week we bring you a great tech tip that you can use at home to keep your car in great shape. We're going to learn today how to correctly wet sand and buff your car. And I'm here with Todd, who is a mechanic at the Volo Car Museum. How are you doing today, Todd? Pretty good. All right, how do you wet sand and buff your car? There's a several, a several step process. Um, you first start out with a 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper, a bucket of warm soapy water, and you put the water down on the surface and sand in circular motion. And this is something you want to do by hand? Yes, yes. Um, you'd be careful not to hit any edges that would wear through real easy. Um, you'd go over the whole car like that. Any parts that are uh, orange peely or faded, you'd get it down to where it was a really dull look on the car. Then uh, second step would be buffing it out. You'd use a wool pad, a uh, really light compound. Is and it a wax compound or is it? It's, it's a, more of a compound. It's got a grit in it. Some have a grit, some are chemical reactive. Okay. Um, you go over it with that at 2700 RPMs, getting it fairly warm. Careful not to burn the paint. Um, go over the whole wet sanding with it. Then you go over it with a, uh, a light or a white a foam pad okay. uh, with a swirl mark remover. And why do you want to do a swirl mark remover? After you're done buffing it with the wool pad and the uh, light compound, mm -hmm. it'll leave uh, waves in the car itself that you'll see in the daylight. Right, you don't want them. No, they stick out pretty bad. Uh, after you're foam padding it, you'll go over it with a uh, wax. And any sort of wax to use? or? Uh, you can use a good carnauba wax that seems to bring out the best shine in the okay. car. Okay. Now how long does the whole process take? Anywhere from two to eight hours. Wow. And once it's all finished, how do you go about keeping the car looking great when you've gone through this whole process? What do you need to do? Um, by either uh, washing it or keeping a wax on it. It should keep and it, it should last a while? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions for our tech tip experts, feel free to log on to our website at www.midwestmuscletv.com. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Wendy Leonard with Midwest Muscle. We are at the 20th anniversary of the Chevy Vet Fest at McCormick Center in Chicago, Illinois. I'm here with Al Ferkey of Mid America Promotions, and uh, he is in charge, along with his partner, of this show. Right. How long have you been doing this? Uh, my partner and I uh, got involved uh, about 25 years ago, and 21 years ago, we uh, founded Mid-America Promotions, which has done, been doing Chevy Vet Fest for the last 20 years. Now, is it specifically Chevy Vet Fests? Well, we do not only Chevy Vet Fests uh, here in Chicago twice a year, but we also do a series of swap meets and car sales in Indianapolis and in South Bend. It, it's, a, it's a very interesting event in that it is only Chevrolet and Corvette. We do allow some uh, Chevrolet-powered vehicles in here. For instance, we've got a super custom 48 uh, Cadillac in here with a Chevy powertrain. But the, the unique thing is that it's it's uh, such a high-quality show. These are probably some of the nicest vehicles that you're, you're going to ever find anywhere. We do have uh, 375 cars in, involved in the two shows, one being the Gold Spinner Concourse and the other being the Bowtie Boulevard. And of those cars, approximately uh, 200 are Chevrolets, uh, Camaros, Chevelles, Novas, uh, trucks, some antique vehicles, and the rest are Corvettes. A lot of Chevys. A lot of Chevys. Lots of Chevys. Great. Well, thank you so much. Hand it over. Your money 
or your life. These were probably the very last words spoken by one of the most famous bank robbers in U.S. history, Bob Younger. Don't know who Bob Younger is? <laughs> Neither did I. But anyway, uh, hello up here. He was one of the four brothers of the most notorious Jesse James gang, and he died on September 9th, 1889, and his body was carried up to the Boot Hill Cemetery in this very hearse. The hearse was called the Boot Hill Express and is a classic design from the late 1800s. In the late 1960s, two guys, a father and son customized car team, Ray Farner and his son, had an idea. Let's customize a hearse and turn it into a drag car. And so in 1966, they completed the Boot Hill Express. The lights are authentic 200-year-old kerosene lamps flown in from India. Back in 66, they were $600 each. The frills here, believe it or not, is brass, not fabric. It's also dated from 1850, as well as the silver. Look at the detail on this car. See those urns? They're original too. Same goes for this restored wood. For something from the 1850s, it's in excellent condition. The engine that Ray Farner put in was a Chrysler 500 horsepower Hemi. You can see the painstaking detail in this customized car that during the 1970s disappeared altogether until just recently. In fact, it was only four years ago that Greg Grahams of the Volo Museum spotted this legendary car. It's valued at over $150,000, but I think it's priceless. So that wraps up the first installment of Midwest Muscle. I'm Wendy. Uh, please join us next week. We will be at McCormick Place in Chicago for World of Wheels. I had a lot of fun and hope to see you next time. Bye.